What are the true biblical methods for healing? You know, in today's time, healing has been put into the hands of the physicians of modern medicine, and we are constantly told that they have all the answers, or that they are on the verge of finding the answers. But is this really the truth? Are they really finding answers, or are they just creating more and more lies? Upon taking my health into my own hands a number of years ago, I found that the natural methods for healing, which actually worked, led me to the Bible. And I then found that the Bible has said all along that the natural methods for healing, besides spiritual, are the only way to go. But before we get into the true methods for healing, let's break down the lies that we are constantly being told by the modern medical industry. First, let's dismantle the lie that there is no God. This is quite easy to do. Do you see these rocks? This little display has been designed by an outside being, and everyone would agree to this. So. Are we really to believe that this hasn't been designed by an outside being? This outside structure, combined with the universe inside our bodies, is far more complex than rocks stacked on top of each other. But somehow organisms aren't designed, right? Beyond this, DNA itself proves that God exists, and I have another video linked above on this subject. I will check it out after you finish watching this video. So, despite what you've heard, God does exist. Getting back to the medical industry and their infinite wisdom, let's see what they've come up with to heal us of our many ailments. Do you happen to have arthritis? Well, here's one of their solutions. With psoriatic arthritis, I had intense joint pain that got worse and worse. Then my rheumatologist prescribed Embril. I'm Phil Mickelson, pro golfer. Embril helps relieve pain and stop joint damage. I've been on the course and on the road. Embril may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events, including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. Did you catch that? Infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, and other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. So, they are telling you in their own commercial that this drug causes cancer. Is relieving arthritis really worth having lymphoma? Moving on from this, another common ailment that people suffer from is depression. Do you happen to suffer from depression? Well, if so, they have something just for you. It's me, and here's my depression. Before I started taking Abilify, I was taking an antidepressant alone. Most days I could get out from under and carry on, but other days I still struggled with my depression. I was handling it, but sometimes it still dragged me down. I'd been feeling stuck for a long time. So I talked to my doctor, and she added Abilify to my antidepressant. She said it could help with my depression, and that some people had symptom improvement as early as one to two weeks. I'm glad I talked to her. I wish I'd done it sooner. Now I feel more in control of my depression. Abilify is now for everyone. Call your doctor if your depression worsens or you have unusual changes in behavior or thoughts of suicide. Antidepressants can increase these in children, teens, and young adults. Well, that sounds good. My depression medication really helped me by increasing my depression. Not only that, but it also gives me suicidal thoughts. Well, this is too good to be true. Sadly, this is the story with a lot of depression medications. Recently, charges were brought against the manufacturers of the medication Cymbalta. It seems that a patient committed suicide soon after taking the prescribed drug. It was later found that five suicides had occurred just in the initial trial of Cymbalta before it went on the market. Somehow, after five suicides, this medication was still approved by the FDA. What's more disturbing is that the company did not even revise its packaging to include the warnings for suicide until one month after the patient's death. So up until that point, the risk of suicide was hidden from consumers. But how about other common problems? What if someone wants to quit smoking? They must have something for that, right? Well, let's see. Chantix has proven to reduce the urge to smoke. In studies, 44% of Chantix users were quit during weeks 9 to 12 of treatment compared to 18% on sugar pill. Herb quit smoking with Chantix and support. Talk to your doctor about Chantix and a support plan that's right for you. Some people have had changes in behavior, hostility, agitation, depressed mood, and suicidal thoughts or actions while taking or after stopping Chantix. 
If you notice agitation, hostility, depression, or changes in behavior, thinking, or mood that are not typical for you, or if you develop suicidal thoughts or actions, stop taking Chantix and call your doctor right away. Talk to your doctor about any history of depression or other mental health problems, which can get worse while taking Chantix. Some people can have allergic or serious skin reactions to Chantix, some of which can be life-threatening. If you notice swelling of face, mouth, throat, or a rash, stop taking Chantix and see your doctor right away. Tell your doctor which medicines you're taking, as they may work differently when you quit smoking. Chantix dosing may be different if you have kidney problems. The most common side effect is nausea. Patients also reported trouble sleeping and vivid, unusual, or strange dreams. Well, that just sounds super. I'm sure 44% of people did quit smoking. I mean, you can't really smoke if you kill yourself. And did you hear the list of the other side effects? I guess those are just added bonuses. By the way, did you know that the Supreme Court recently ruled that people can no longer sue pharmaceutical companies over these side effects? Now it seems drug companies are exempt from fraud, mislabeling, side effects, and accidental death. This ruling stemmed from a few years ago when a certain female patient was prescribed a medication called Celindac for shoulder pain. As a result, she developed Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. This basically left her blind with burn lesions on 65% of her body and also caused two septic shock episodes and 12 major eye surgeries. She is now unable to read, drive, work, and requires a feeding tube. By the way, the Supreme Court ruling overturned the money she was awarded and now she gets nothing. You see how this system works? You go to the doctor for a problem the doctor prescribes you a drug to mask the symptoms. The drug then causes other problems, and so you go back to the doctor for more medication to address the new symptoms, and you basically do this over and over again until you succumb to the suicidal thoughts, cancer, or the host of other terrible diseases. Oh, and by the way, if you do develop cancer, they can't really help you. In this area, they are lying to you as well. Chemotherapy is one of the best methods for treating cancer, right? Well, what they're not telling you is that a chemotherapy study was done over two continents 12 years ago, and they found that chemotherapy was only about 2% effective in treating cancer. Did your doctor forget to tell you about this? To give you some idea of how bad this is, you could probably get higher than 2% by simply walking on the treadmill for 30 minutes a day. And walking doesn't cost you $10,000 every time you do it. Stay tuned because there is some hope on this topic in the second half of this video. But now you might say, well, we spend thousands of dollars on top hospital care, so we should be getting the best, right? Sadly, this is also not the case. When you do your homework, you actually find that administered antibiotics cause 700,000 emergency room visits per year just in the U.S. Modern medicine is at least the third leading cause of death in the U.S., with some estimates placing it at number one. Over 1.5 million Americans are injured by drug errors in hospitals, doctor's offices, and nursing homes. And if in a hospital, a patient can expect at least one medication error every single day. Even more disturbing, more than 100,000 patients die every year, just in the U.S., from drugs properly prescribed and taken as directed. And this number does not include overdoses. All this information is linked below for you to check out yourself. Harvard has recently found that surgical complications are the top reason for hospital readmissions, and the most frequent complications are due to infections from surgical wounds. When it comes to these infections, they are really out of control in the United States hospitals. The CDC claims that 1.7 million people contract infections in hospitals every year, but the truth is actually several times that number. The MRSA superbug that doesn't respond to most antibiotics has been growing rapidly in recent years. In 1993, there were about 2,000 cases. By 2005, there were about 368,000 cases. And by 2007, there were 880,000 cases per year. And this research is only talking about the MRSA superbug. This does not include the numbers for all the other superbugs and viruses that you can contract in the hospital. As you can now see, the modern medical industry is just that, an industry. They are primarily in the business of making you sick in order to make money. If you get into an accident, they might be able to patch you up. They might even be able to do cosmetic procedures. But when it comes to internal healing or disease prevention, they score very low. 
You can take as many Vicodin pills as you want to mask the symptoms of severe pain, but if you don't fix the root of the pain, then you're only going to make things worse. And one too many Vicodin pills, and you're dead. If we truly want to prevent and heal our internal ailments, then there's got to be something better than this. So now let's take a look at the true methods for healing, and let's see what the Bible has to say about those methods. So, the Bible tells us that we only will find the truth if we seek it. That means that the true answers to our questions, including our health concerns, will not come from the mainstream information, including those drug commercials that are pelting us in the face every day. Christians are supposed to seek the truth of the Lord and come up from among the mainstream world. So, first, what has God given us to walk around in? The answer is our bodies. So, is God one to leave us high and dry? Of course not. The Bible tells us to glorify God in our body and in our spirit. And one reason you should do this is that God has designed many systems in our bodies that help them to function. And so glorifying God in your body helps you to function better. To give a little description, every day your body produces skin, muscle, and bone. It churns out rich red blood that carries nutrients and oxygen to remote outposts, and it sends nerve signals skipping along thousands of miles of brain and body pathways. It also formulates chemical messengers that shuttle from one organ to another, issuing the instructions that help sustain your life. Yeah, no design needed for something like that, right? It's really hard to be an atheist when you begin to understand just what the human body is capable of. These systems are far beyond anything that man can come up with, and these systems also allow us to self-heal. Ever hear the immune system? We have many built-in defenses like this that protect and heal us from harm. Now, what runs these systems? The answer to that is vitamins and minerals. Our food is supposed to be filled with certain vitamins and minerals, and these nutrients allow our bodies to function. It's not the weight of the food, but rather the nutrient content that's important. Vitamins and minerals are fuel for your body, like oil and gas are fuel for your car. Now, if you're driving a car 100 miles and are really low on gas and oil, what soon happens to your car? It breaks down. This is the exact same with a human body. One of the biggest causes for disease and other ailments is that we are malnourished. Most of the foods you eat on the run literally have no vitamin and mineral content, and often contain other harmful substances. So, it's really a miracle that our bodies are able to keep going so long after being treated so badly. The problem is that when nutrients are not available, your body takes them from your reserves, and this means leaching them from your bones. This is why it gets so much easier to break bones when you're older. So, if many problems result from a lack of vitamins and minerals, then the solution must be to fuel those systems. This can be done by diet and supplementation, and by employing the other natural treatments that can be derived from the organic, non-GMO foods that we should be eating. The Bible, in fact, explains this method of healing clearly. You see, there are two similar stories in the Bible having to do with two different high kings of Judah. Both of these kings contracted a life-threatening ailment, and they each dealt differently with their problems. In comparing the two stories, you can then see God's healing method. In 2 Kings chapter 20 verses 1 through 5, the Bible speaks of King Hezekiah and tells us that in those days Hezekiah was sick and near death. And so Hezekiah prayed to the Lord for his life, and the Lord answered by Isaiah the prophet and said that he would surely heal him. God then employs the following healing method through his prophet in verse 7 which says, Then Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And so they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. So it seems Hezekiah suffered from some sort of leg ulcer, and a fig poultice was used to draw out the toxins, which then healed him. This is God's method. You seek the Lord first. If God does not intend for a miraculous healing, like the type Jesus performed, and that which is also mentioned in James chapter 5, verse 14, then the next step is to employ the healing methods that God has placed within the earth. Did you know that raw, organic, non-GMO figs have been used for thousands of years as a healing method? And that there have been positive studies showing them to have benefit in treating anemia, cancer, diabetes, leprosy, liver disease, paralysis, skin diseases, ulcers, and infections? 
This is the healing power of just one thing made by God. Now though, let's look at the story of King Asa. And the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 16 that Asa became diseased in his feet, and his malady was severe. Yet in his disease he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians, and so he died. Do you see how Asa broke God's method? He didn't seek the Lord, and he didn't allow the Lord to guide him to the proper healing method. This is a story that continues into the New Testament, because it says in Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 29, that there was a certain woman with an issue of blood for 12 years, and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. Wow, this verse sounds like it could have been written yesterday. You see how nothing has changed? And look at what happened when the woman sought the Lord in verse 29. She immediately was healed. The reason that nothing has changed in 2,000 years in terms of mainstream medicine is because the Bible says that it won't. The Bible tells us that the world is currently under satanic rule, and we are supposed to seek the truth of the Lord and expose the mainstream strategies of the devil. So let's do some exposing, shall we? God gave us natural things to eat. And that basically means plants and animals. Now, there are some people that teach that you must be a vegetarian, but I will refer those people to Romans chapter 14 verses 1 through 3. So, God gave us plants and animals as a diet, along with byproducts like honey. Well, what can we immediately understand then? We can immediately know that anything we eat, which is not made by God, is technically a sin. And if it's a sin, then it will have negative consequences attached to it. So anything genetically modified you should stay away from because GMOs are changing God's creation and adding things into it. Also, if you notice anything that says artificial on the back of your food packaging, then you shouldn't eat it. You should also stay away from most vitamins that don't come from natural sources. Let's take a look at some of these artificial food additives. Some of the most common ones are the artificial food colorings. Did you know these food colorings, which can easily be replaced by natural food-based colorings, have been linked to cancer, ADHD, allergies, etc.? 15 million pounds of these colorings go into the mainstream food supply, with three dyes containing known carcinogens, four leading to serious allergic reactions, and seven of them have led to cancer in lab animals, including brain, testicular, and colon cancer, as well as other mutations. Guess what kinds of foods get the most food colorings added to them? Kids' foods. Yep, our children, who won't even fully develop their immune systems till around adolescence, are given healthy doses of poison all the time. They say that Skittles will help you taste the rainbow, but you're more likely to taste death from these dyes. And your lucky charms really aren't that lucky either. Even synthetic children's vitamins contain these dyes, and other dangerous additives, so watch out for this. As parents, you need to be aware about these artificial things that you might be feeding to your children. As Jesus says, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Do you really want to see cancer, ADHD, or other ailments on the horizon? You might then say, Well, natural and organic food is too expensive. I can't afford it. Well, what does Jesus also say about this? Jesus says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Are you seeking first the kingdom? You better be if you consider yourself a Christian. Side note, any time that I don't know what I'm eating, I always pray and ask God to eradicate anything negative that I might be consuming. Let's take a look at what else you can find if you seek the truth. Remember from earlier the horrible side effects that you get with anti-smoking medications? Did you know that there's a natural herb called Lobelia that you can purchase for about $5 that will help you stop smoking faster with no side effects? In fact, this herb even helps with other problems as well, like asthma and congestion. Here's some quotes written by consumers, and one of them reads, I used it to kill nicotine cravings and oh my did it work. The bad thing is, I took it three times and never had the urge to smoke again. Now I have 97 pills left. 
This person smoked for 29 years and now considers this a miracle pill. If you need something like this, I will put a link below with this coupon code which will take $5 off your first order. So you'll basically get this for free. Much better than Chantix, which costs $28 for 7 tablets and also makes you depressed and suicidal. Moving on, remember those drug resistant superbugs from earlier? You know, MRSA and strains of E. coli? Did you know that raw organic honey and organic ginger mixes have been proven to fight off these bugs? One study concluded that honey and ginger powder extract mixtures have the potential to serve as a cheap source of antibacterial agents, especially for the drug resistant bacteria strains. So what they're saying is that this natural mixture worked when the drugs didn't. So why aren't you hearing about this on the mainstream news? Starting to get the picture? Let's hear about another healing agent that we need to fight diseases. I'd like to introduce Tom, Dr. Thomas Levy, former assistant professor of medicine at Tulane Medical School and fellow of the American College of Cardiology. He's the author of four books, including Curing the Incurable, Vitamin C, Infectious Disease, and Toxins. Please welcome Dr. Levy. Wherever you have a clearly established infection, a clearly established condition of increased toxicity or intoxication, regardless of whatever else you're doing to treat the patient, you should always vigorously supplement vitamin C because the toxin in the infection itself is automatically inducing a vitamin C deficiency. And if, this, if that's not bad enough, when you look at the research on vitamin C, a vitamin C deficiency is always going to acutely compromise your immune system and make any other things that you do that much more difficult to be truly efficacious in the presence of an ongoing vitamin C deficiency. Vitamin C, by virtue of the work of Dr. Frederick Klenner, is an absolute viricide. Again, in all the literature that I've reviewed, and it's been quite massive, so far there's not been a single virus which, when brought into direct contact with adequate levels of vitamin C, either in vitro or in vivo, where the, vitamin, where the virus is not 100% inactivated or destroyed. Period. When I see news shows, I saw one Last night or the night before, this poor little girl who's just come out of a long-standing coma from her West Nile virus. I've cured two cases of West Nile virus, the only two cases that have come to me. Very simple. West Nile has been one of the most responsive viral syndromes I've ever seen. Nobody, nobody should die or be sick of West Nile virus. Please remember that. Nobody. Now, in addition to being an absolute viricide, Vitamin C is also strongly microbiocidal in general. It will facilitate the cure of most infectious diseases. Again, these are all documented. Klenner, back in 1948, <clears throat> Klenner was one about the first person that started using vitamin C actively as a therapeutic agent, a chemotherapeutic agent, in the middle of a polio epidemic in Reedsville, North Carolina in 1948, where, if you're old enough to remember this personally, uh, kids were dropping like flies, and kids were being paralyzed for life. Klenner treated 60 consecutive infants with intravenous and intramuscular vitamin C, mostly intramuscular because they were so small, and he had 60 complete cures. About half of the kids were documented with spinal tap, and the other half, well, it was the middle of a, of an epidemic. It really wasn't difficult to see that here's another case of polio coming rolling into the emergency room. Now, interestingly enough, about 57 of these 60 were cured in three days. The other three took another couple days. And it's just an incredible and awful and horrible shame that diseases like this are still not treated with vitamin C. There's nothing else that even comes close. Nothing. 
Hepatitis. I emphasize acute hepatitis versus I talked about the chronic hepatitis before. Hepatitis is one of the most dramatic things you can treat with vitamin C. You give 50, 75, 100 grams a day of vitamin C intravenously to an acute hepatitis patient in a large liver, fever, jaundice, the type of patient that's going to be sick for anywhere from two to six months. And they're clinically well most of the time in three to four days and laboratory-wise cured in seven to 10 days. Every time. Measles and mumps, these are very easy for hepatitis, uh, for uh, vitamin C, but more importantly, I'm sure all of you are aware that often enough, measles and mumps have a lot of secondary problems, neurologic problems, uh, CNS problems. Vitamin C has worked very well uh, in these cases as well. Encephalitis was perhaps some of the most dramatic things that Dr. Klenner worked with. I don't know how many patients he might have treated that were in a coma that didn't get well. I only know the ones that he reported on in his articles. And on the ones that he reported on in his articles, every one of his patients that had encephalitis, often comatose, comatose, were completely cured in three to four days. They would usually regain consciousness anywhere from three to ten hours after the vitamin C was initiated. Again, it's pretty heady stuff. It's in, in, in probably until you jump in there and start using it yourself, you, you just can't really believe that treating some of our most horrendous illnesses still are so easily cured and certainly so easily controlled. Mononucleosis, I've had the opportunity myself. I, as a cardiologist, I don't see a lot of acute infectious patients. But every now and then, somebody with chest pain has something else going on. And on at least uh, two separate patients that had mononucleosis, they were both uh, young college girls, They'd, both of them, they're almost like twin clinical histories, had had to drop out of college for the uh, last four to six months because they were just so horribly fatigued, headaches, everything else. Both of these young ladies were fine in three to four days, complete cures. As I said earlier, if you're never comfortable with using vitamin C as a monotherapy, use all the other standard therapies. That's okay. And if you use a high, dose enough, high enough dose of vitamin C, you'll cure the condition and you'll neutralize the toxicity of the mainstream therapy, the antitoxin, the snake bite toxin, uh, antitoxin, you name it. So you probably want to start eating some organic foods with high vitamin C content. And if you want to get a vitamin C supplement, then you want to get a supplement without any dangerous chemical additives. And one not derived from corn, because most corn is now genetically modified. In terms of diseases, I myself used high doses of this to treat a severe case of pneumonia that I came down with. And remember the low success of the cancer chemotherapy from earlier? The ones that showed only 2% success? Well, high doses of vitamin C have been studied to show a 55% success rate in treating cancer. So why isn't your oncologist recommending this to you at the hospital? How about vitamin D3? Did you know that a majority of studies have found a relation between sufficient vitamin D3 and protection against cancer? Studies have shown that deficiency of this vitamin may account for thousands of premature deaths from colon, breast, ovarian, and prostate cancer annually. Have you heard about this from your doctor? Is this part of your treatment? Have you been given a strict cancer-fighting diet by your doctor, as it is proven that many God-given foods have cancer-fighting properties? Why even worry about treating cancer if you can prevent it? In terms of other ailments, including bacterial infections, have you heard about Bragg's apple cider vinegar? Did you know this is really cheap to buy? has been used for thousands of years and has testimonial evidence of treating over 50 plus ailments. I myself have used this remedy to cure both cases of kidney stones and severe food poisoning. I will place links below to our website which has sections on treating everything from viruses to severe dental ailments, severe depression, alcoholism, cancer, and you won't need a prescription for anything you find there. Again, 
Why wouldn't you hear this from the mainstream? It's because the mainstream is satanically driven. That's the way the world currently works. This is especially true of the United States. And the reason we are in such rough shape is because this nation is working on forgetting God. When that starts to happen, disease is sure to follow. Not only that, it's very likely that this nation is the final evil kingdom of Babylon that the book of Revelation speaks about. Did you know a description of that Babylon is given in Revelation chapter 18 verse 23, which says that by this nation's sorceries were all nations deceived? Well, did you know that in the original Greek, this word sorceries means something a lot more interesting? If you look this up, the Greek word used there is pharmakia, which means the use or the administering of drugs. This is where we get the word pharmacy. So the final Babylon seems to be a major player in the pharmaceutical drug industry. And guess who is at the forefront of that industry right now? You guessed it, the United States. So it seems that the Bible has the past, present, and future locked down when it comes to the realm of true healing. In fact, during Jesus' millennial reign, we get a glimpse of the medical system in place for the remaining mortal people on earth in Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 12. This verse talks about all kinds of trees growing up, and that from these trees the leaves of them will be used for medicine. So it seems that during perfect rule, perfect medical care will be all natural, although wrapped in spiritual. If that's the way things are in perfection, then that's what we should individually be trying to emulate now. The reason that the Bible is so accurate in terms of the reality of natural healing is because the Bible tells the truth. And this is what the mainstream and the modern medical industry do not want you to believe. They want you to think that the Bible is just an outdated book, that there is no God, and that they are the ones to be relied on when it comes to true healing. But this is not the truth. The truth is Jesus. And Jesus has offered us what we need to take ourselves out of the world system. Not only that, but he's given us the cure for the one ailment that has no natural cure. Death. Jesus has conquered death. And anyone who enters into a relationship with him will be freed from the death that he's conquered. Because the way of the truth means life. So we need to listen when the truth speaks.